Okay, now that I have these table designs, I can actually look to start implementing tables in my database. Uh, I have the bare outline of what a table should look like, and I can now start thinking about writing the code to create it. As I mentioned, this, this step of translation, creating these table designs, that we take an ERD and turn it into these, these table designs, there are a number of rules surrounding it, and I can't go over, over all of them here, but suffice it to say, when the appropriate time comes in the term, we'll go over the rules and the circumstances under which you'd create one set of table designs or another. But for now, hopefully it's relatively apparent that this is a decent fit. It somehow resembles the entity relationship diagram you guys saw earlier, and also the requirement statement we started with at the beginning, which is obviously the most important part. So I want to write some code that creates these tables in a relational database. Now I've cheated here, and I've gone and written that code in advance for you, rather than uh, you guys see me hunt and peck my way through it on screen here, I'm just going to show it to you. I'm, this language is called SQL, Structured Query Language. It's fairly simple, straightforward. Uh, hopefully you can see some analogy here between what's going on in these structures and the code that's uh, showing up in the notepad over here. Uh, the SQL statement to create a table is called create table, helpfully. I specify the name of the table, and then I list specifications of the various columns I'm going to keep in the table. You can see I have an ISBN, I have a title, and I have a cover type. The second thing here that says car 10, for example, bar car 250, etc., these are called data types. I won't describe those at great length right now. Again, we'll go over all these, all these things in the appropriate weeks of the course. But the basic gist of the idea is I tell the database roughly what sort of data I'm going to store. Is it kind of alphabetic character type data? Is it numbers? Variety of things. ISBN, we'll, we'll, we'll get to why that's being stored as character as opposed to numbers, even though most of the... ISBN values tend to be numerics. That's something we'll, we'll deal with uh, when we have more time in the middle of the course. But you hopefully you can see I have spots for uh, storing the information that's described in here. I apply the so-called data types to them. And where is my little scroll bar here? And you can see I mix up my data types a little bit for something like start date and end date actually have a so-called date data type. And again, that's roughly characterizing the type of data that's going to get stored in the column. ISBN and friend ID uniquely identify book and friend, and they're designated the syntax primary key basically tells the database, this column is special. It's a unique identifier. Don't let duplicate values be entered into it, and make sure that something always gets entered into that. I don't want this column to be blank or null because again it's the way I'm going to reference a particular book. We have primary key that's composite two columns for borrows. That's consistent with what we saw down here that both friend and book together kind of what uniquely identifies a instance of something being borrowed. This model assumes of course you know a friend and book are a unique combination for borrows it assumes that a friend can't borrow a book multiple times. Let's just say that's consistent with our business rules right now, but if that weren't the case, we would have to do some things to deal with that. What's interesting about borrows is you'll see it has this references keyword that is not present in the other tables. And references is the syntax in SQL we use to represent to, I should say, implement this foreign key concept. The idea that the friend column in borrows points somewhere here you can see it pictorially represented that friend points over to the friend table in the friend ID. Here it is in code that friend in uh, the borrows table references friend ID in the friend table. Two ways of, of saying the same thing, as if, you, if you will, uh, and makes a connection there. One of the rules about a so-called foreign key is that once I define a table with a foreign key like this, it's going to constrain the values I can enter into the friend column of the borrows table. If I try to enter a column, excuse me, a value in the friend column of the borrows table that isn't already present in the friend ID column of the friend table, the database is going to throw an error at me. Let's say very concre concretely, if I create 
three or four friends in my friend table and I assign them friend IDs one, two, three, and four, let's say. Then whenever I put in the borrows table here, whenever I try to use this field that is supposed to point to a friend of the friend table, I can't use anything other than one, two, three, and four, the valid values that I entered into the friend table originally. You know, a friend ID of six, let's say, put in here would be meaningless if I only had values one, two, three, and four over in the original friend table. A foreign key is supposed to document a connection between you know, a borrowing and tie that up to a certain friend and a certain book. So it wouldn't make sense if I could specify friends in books that didn't actually exist in the database. So this syntax where I say references creates a so-called foreign key constraint where the database is going to make sure that any time I enter a value in this friend column or in this book column that that value has to already be present in the friend and book tables respectively. Okay. I am going to show you what it looks like to run uh, these commands in Oracle. Oracle is going to be our reference database for the course. I'm just going to do the copy paste thing here right now. So I've copied the command to create the book table. Switching over to my local Oracle interface. Most of you will be doing this on the iSchool Linux server. Don't worry about what that means for right now. Um, and it's going to be a little less graphically friendly than this, but I thought for a demo this would be kind of a better way to show you guys. So I'm going to do a run. You can see I had a table created. I've actually created a structure in the database that matches this. And when I'm going to come along and stuff data into that in a few minutes. And after I do that, I'm going to show you that the data actually does exist in the database. Now I'm going to go and create the table friend. Go ahead and I execute this command. Friend table has been created. I'll come back here and do the borrows table as well. Because the borrows table references those two other tables, I have to create it last because it, in its definition, contains references to the friend table and the book table. If I had created this one first or before either of those other tables, the database would have griped at me and said, I don't know what you're talking about with this friend or book table. So I, I create those guys first, and I go and create the borrows table last. There we go. All three of my tables are now created. Now I have to write some SQL code to actually stick data in those tables. <coughs> I'm going to use what's called an insert command in SQL. Insert is fairly straightforward. I say insert into the name of some table. I'm going to start with book and I supply a values clause. Again, as I mentioned at the outset, these, this is not a best practice way to write this statement, but it is kind of the quickest and dirtiest way to do it. So for the sake of simplicity here, we're going to go with this format. When we cover SQL in the second half of the term, I'm going to go over best practices for how you want to construct a statement like this in a production application. But for right now, it's not too bad. So I'm going to insert into the book table three values. My ISBN, I've obviously made up a fake one here. My title, and whether the book is hardcover or an S if it tends to be softcover. Take a statement like this, copy it. I'm going to run it out of my SQL interface. Okay, a row has been inserted. Now just for fun, now that there's actually something in one of the tables, I'm going to show you how to view it. This command, select command, is what you use in SQL to read data out of a table. The star means show me everything. Show me all the columns that are present in the table. I'm going to do select star from book. This is going to return all columns and all rows in book, basically a way to dump everything from book. I only have one record that I just entered into book, the war and peace there, so it should show up in my output. Lo and behold, you can see that there is some structure that's been created in the database with the, the columns we've been talking about, ISBN, title, and cover type. And the, the actual record that I inserted with my last insert statement uh, with this ISBN, war and peace, and that's a hardcover book, it showed up in there. The database remembered we've achieved one of our goals. We've created a structure. We've been able to stick data in it. The database remembered it for us. And we're going to be able to do lots of other interesting things on the basis of that. So you can see I have other statements here 
uh, that go with different books. Then I create some friends, Funny Bones Jones, that person's email address. Uh, again, these are the friend ID that identifier I'm making up. First name, last name, and email address for each of the friends. And then in borrows, as you'll recall, the structure of the table was the friend identifier, the column called friend that points to friend identifier in the friend table, the column called book that points to the ISBN uh, column in the book table, the date uh, which the borrowing started or the date in which it was loaned out, however you want to think of it, and the date which it was returned. Right now I'm making the assumption that says when I initially loan a book out, I am going to leave the date returned null, which makes some degree of sense. Remember this because I'm going to come back to this point in a little bit. I happen to be writing, or I should say recording this video, as you can see now, on Thursday, June 23rd, just a little bit after midnight. And so at present, these are somewhat realistic dates relative to the current date. That, that fact is going to play or become significant a little bit later on in the video. But again, I record the start date when the book is first loaned out and the end date when it is returned. For books that haven't been returned yet, I've got nulls in there. So presumably the, the 90 and 91 books, which are War and Peace and Oracle Complete Reference, they've been loaned out on these dates that haven't come back yet. The other book here, uh, My Sequel 4th Edition, it was loaned out on June 12th and returned on the 19th of June. So I'm going to go ahead and execute these statements to put them in the database. I'm not going to show that to you in the video. I'll just come along and show you some selects that demonstrate that they're in there. 